ಸದಾಶಿವಸಮಾರಂಭಾಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಮಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತಾಂದೇ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹವೀರ್ಜಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ಪಿತ್ಪಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವರುಣೇಂದ್ರ ರುದ್ರ ಮರುತ ಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈ ಸಾಂಗ ಪದ ಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಸಾಮಗಾ ಧ್ಯಾನಾವಸ್ಥಿತ ತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಯೋಗಿನ ಯಾಂತನ್ನ ವಿದುಸುರಸುರಗಣ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ಏಟೀಂತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನಿರುದ್ಧ ಅಥ ಅಷ್ಟಾದಶೋಧ್ಯಾಯ ಅಥ ಅಷ್ಟಾದಶೋಧ್ಯಾಯ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಉಚ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಉಚ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಮಹಾಬಾಹೋ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಮಹಾಬಾಹೋ ತತ್ವಿಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ವೇದಿ ತತ್ವಿಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ವೇದಿ ಹೃಷಿ ಕೇಶ ತ್ಯಾಗಸ್ಯಷಿ ಕೇಶ ಪೃಥಕ್ ಕೇಶಿ ನಿಷೂದನ ಪೃಥಕ್ ಕೇಶಿ ನಿಷೂದನ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವಾನುವಾಚ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವಾನುವಾಚ ಕಾಮ್ಯಾಂ ಕರ್ಮಣ ನ್ಯಾಸ ಕಾಮ್ಯಾಂ ಕರ್ಮಣ ನ್ಯಾಸ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಕವಯೋ ವಿದು ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಕವಯೋ ವಿದು ಸರ್ವಕರ್ಮ ಫಲ ತ್ಯಾಗಕರ್ಮ ಫಲ ತ್ಯಾಗ ವಿಚಕ್ಷಣ ಪ್ರಾಹುಸ್ತ್ಯಾಗಂ ವಿಚಕ್ಷಣ ತ್ಯಾಜ್ಯಂ ದೋಷವದಿತ್ಯೇಕೆ ತ್ಯಾಜ್ಯಂ ದೋಷವದಿತ್ಯೇಕೆ ಕರ್ಮ ಪ್ರಾಹುರ್ಮನೀಷಿಣ ಕರ್ಮ ಪ್ರಾಹುರ್ಮನೀಷಿಣ ಯಜ್ಞಾನ ತಪ ಕರ್ಮ ಯಜ್ಞಾನ ತಪ ಕರ್ಮ ನ ತ್ಯಾಜ್ಯಮಿತಿ ಚಾಪರೆ ನ ತ್ಯಾಜ್ಯಮಿತಿ ಚಾಪರೆ so we are seeing the 18th chapter also beginning with a question from arjuna indicating that this teaching is based on a dialogue or the format of the teaching is a dialogue but it doesn't mean that when the teach in our tradition in the ashram when this uh, swami ji is talking he'll talk continuously for one hour you don't raise hands and then wait 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 you, you, you don't say all these things no there's no feedback from the students just whatever happens happens suppose swami ji is missed a shloka instead of three he read four swami ji swami ji one shloka we missed that that right we have so i mean we have right to talk of this. but it's it's one way it's one way because 
I mean, one way, and then after that, there is satsang, Q&A, and all we do. Yeah. That's the tradition. And uh, the reason is this. In this subject matter, it's being so subtle. You, you have to allow the teacher to complete the train of thought. One line is not enough. One, one five minutes also not enough. Half an hour may be enough. And then the, the, some chunk has to be sent out. And then now you have processed it. And later on in the evening, morning class, evening satsang. Something like that. That's a tradition. The satsang, a, a, a discussion with the teacher is always part of the curriculum. In any ashram, even in tradition. Why? In Bhagavad Gita itself, the tradition is there. So, it is a question of somebody, Acharya, coming and saying, I'm going to change the tradition. No. Because this is a matter to be understood, not swallowed. You know, swallowing? Belief. Belief, a lot of belief is swallowing. Some beliefs are okay, but some beliefs just swallowing. Whatever is said has to be swallowed. No questions asked. It is not like that. Very clear. So, even after 17 chapters, Arjuna has a question. Correct? Makes us feel good. I am in good company. I also have a lot of questions. So it makes us feel good. And so, a paradigm shift is needed. And it takes, takes that aha moment takes a while for that to come. Okay? That's why we have to stay with it. Stay with it. That's why Yajnamalkya tells Maitri Shrota Vyaha. Keep listening. Keep listening. Because my outlook is so different. And now for Atma Vidya, Brahma Vidya, now the outlook has to, they say, turning inward. Turning inward means what? Where is told me the book that says how to turn inward? Is there a book? How to turn inward? I, I think I should write a book. That's right. I got an idea just now. Just try, just say something. People will buy the book. Finally, profits all matters, right? So somebody will there buy the book and aha, aha, oh, so great. Some words I'll use here and there. And then right, this guy knows some stuff. And I know some Sanskrit also. Periodically introduce some Sanskrit and then sell the book. Yeah. How to turn inward. That's right. So this is all about turning inward. And so the consistent and systematic study is needed. And then you ask a question, then the question answered. It appears as, as though it's answered. Then uh, two weeks later, you said, you know what? What was that answer again? Means what? It, it, it stuck to me, but it didn't really stick. To me. So that's the nature of this subject. Many subjects are like that. That's why in school, in college, they, they drill you. They just give you homework after homework, tutorial after tutorial. So that, that subject matter just gets imprinted in the home. So here, what we say is Shravanam and Mananam. Shravanam means listening. Mananam means processing it. And if there are any questions, either answer it yourself, think it through first. Otherwise, bring it forward to the teacher itself. That's it. Sometimes it's like a card game, you know. Those of you who played cards, different types of games and all that. Dummy and bridge and all these things are there. Some games require a little more. Little more finesse is needed. Little more thinking is needed. Like chess. Chess is not straightforward. You can't simply go cut. Oh, I have horses there, so I'll just move the horse. You can't say that. You have to think three, four steps ahead. What will he do? What will she do? Like this, you have to go forward. So great players, big players, they're able to process all that. Think five, six steps ahead. Very, very difficult. I won't say this is like that. I won't say Bhagavad Gita is as complicated as chess and all that. Much, very easy it is. But that, that shift, paradigm shift takes a while. And so, so anyway, that's the idea here. So that's why the questions are constantly cropping and here he's going to say, I got it. He's going to say that in this, in this chapter, number 18. And uh, that's why sometimes some, some, some of you folks also, right, in your homes, they ask you, husband is asking the wife, wife is asking the husband, what is you sitting every Monday morning, Tuesday or Thursday morning in class, somebody is coming and talking, you don't even know who this guy is, somebody in Coimbatore it seems. And uh, somewhere he's sitting and you're simply listening. 
one and a half hours and then satsang is going on and on. Two hours, what did you get? Tell me. Did you change because of all this? Four years you've been attending classes. Any change? Same old. <laughs> then you wonder, my God, have I been wasting time like this? Bhagavad Gita and all? No, no, I can't do that. There's something good has to happen. So all these feelings are there. People do get these feelings. So this is the, by the way, this is going to be the last question Arjuna is going to ask. Last question. Okay. And uh, the first, when Krishna picks up the thread in the second chapter, right? First to second, it's almost Krishna didn't speak. Maybe one or two implicit statements are there. But Krishna really starts speaking only in the 11th shloka of the second chapter. And prior to that, he says, Shishyaste ham shadi maam tvam prapannam. Ajina is bailing, complaining, and I'm, this is this is wrong place for me to be. I need to go away from here. I'm going to gain papa. I'm going to gain. I'm going to go to hell. That's what he says. Okay, because he's sure he's going to win the war, and he's going to. There's going to be a massacre that's going to happen, and so I'm going to go to hell. Very, he's very clear. Ajina is very clear. But then Krishna is smiling, so he realizes there is some problem in my thinking. He says, "I am going to be my your student." The minute somebody says in our Shastram, I will be your student, that means it is the responsibility of the teacher to speak. Until now, nothing was said, but now something has to be said. And then he starts teaching. Yeah. It was not a question per se. He just says, I'm confused and I want to be your student. He doesn't ask a very specific question. Then, of course, uh, then other questions are coming up, right? So, like in the, in the, um, Third chapter begins with a question. Many questions are there in second chapter itself. Sthita pragnyasya ka bhasha samadhista se kesham. Sthita pragnya. Who is a sthita pragnya? So who is somebody who has got this knowledge? Can you tell me how does he walk? How does he talk? As though walking and talking is going to show off what the person knows. Okay, That means Jinnah doesn't know what to ask. He doesn't know. I mean, that's, we're all like that. We don't know. The subject matter is new. And how can somebody's walking style tell you whether the person is a professor or not? You can't. And so, he is asking like that. Third chapter is asking, Jaya si chet karmanaste mata buddhir jana tat kim karmani ghore ma miho jai si kesha in response to that first second chapter which gives a summary of the entire teaching where he praises knowledge you don't know yourself, you have to know yourself. He says that. That's called Jnana Yoga. Huh? But then he also says, and he says, karma is not going to get you this Jnana. Karma is opposite of Jnana. Action and knowledge are opposite of each other. And so, but then, having praised knowledge, he says, therefore, go and fight. Therefore, go and fight. I thought you were going to say, go, pursue knowledge. Come with me. I'll take you to Rishikesh. Because Rishikesh is close by to Kurukshetra, right? And so, not like they're in Chennai, in Kanyakumari, and then you have to go all the way to Rishikesh. Nobody thinks of Rishikesh in Tamil Nadu. Because Rishikesh is far away. It's far up north, you know. And so, it's a long journey for people in the south. But there, very close by, you could have gone. But Krishna never gave that idea. He always said, Uttishtata, therefore, get up and fight. Get up and fight. And so here also, probably, Swamiji says, probably his last ditch attempt by Arjuna. Maybe Krishna will tell. Okay, it's time to wind up. And then, okay, come on, give me, give me the sannyasa vastram, you know, kashaya vastram, akar robe. And then maybe there is some chance. That's what he's waiting for. Anyway. He's asking, if you look at the shloka, it says, Sanyasa Syamaha Bahu. Sanyasa. He's going to ask, tell me about Sanyasa and Tyaga. That is what he's asking. Two words he's using. That Krishna has used all through the Bhagavad Gita. In various forms he's used. And Sanyasa, the word Sanyasa is not new to any Indian. Doesn't matter what religion they belong to, they will know what sannyasa is. 
seen people in this akhar robe, kashaya vastram. That person is a sannyasi, we all know. And that person is worshipful. Doesn't matter what sampradaya, you are from Vishita Advaita, is gone, this, that, nothing. Ram Krishna mission, what? No. Namaskar karo, bas. Sannyasi. They have given up his ideas, they are guys. And so, <clears throat> and so, of course, Arjuna knows sannyasa. And he is asking about sannyasa now. The best time for Arjuna to have taken sannyasa was when he was in the forest. So many years he was in the forest. That's when they should have said, you know what? That's it. This is our karma, right? And so, I'll accept whatever is given to me and take sannyasa. All, everybody takes sannyasa. Yudhishthira sannyasa. Sannyasi. Arjuna sannyasi. Everybody sannyasi. Bhima probably will protest and say, come on, you idiots. You idiots. This guy is... <laughs> he's a furious guy. He's furious. And he's waiting for the next moment. And you guys take sannyasa. I'm not taking sannyasa. I think he'll say that. Bhima will definitely say that. Yadishtra will then give him advice. Oh, Bhima, that's not the way. You're very anxious. You have a lot of anger in you. Like this, he'll give a big lecture. You know? Dima will say, forget it. <clears throat> Keep all this stuff to you. <laughs> Don't tell me all this stuff. Anyway, so, Sanyas. In first chapter itself, second chapter itself, it appears as though he wants to run away and he wants to take to Sanyasa. He did not use the word Sanyasa, Arjuna. He seems to indicate that this is not the right place. This war is not the right thing. Right. So, so therefore, uh, the what is the meaning of the word sannyasa? What is the meaning? Nyasa. That word nyasaha means to give up. Nyasa is to give up. Sam ni as. Okay, so those who are not Sanskrit students, don't worry. Don't worry. You can blissfully ignore the next minute or so. And it's there are many Sanskrit students in class, so they like to hear these things. And you also will get some benefit of knowing what the Sanskrit language is. Tam ni as. That is the word. There is a, there is a asadhatu. As. The asadhatu is there exactly the same dhatu. There are three asadhatus in Sanskrit. And one of the dhatu is the asti staha santi. You get this asti, famous asti, you know. Sanskrit asti he is. He is coming. So that is is asti, and that is one dhatu, but that is not this dhatu. Here there is another dhatu as, which means yage. Okay, as. So that is a kind of sannyasa is talking about the giving up samyak. Samyak means completely. Completely means what? I'll give I'll give up the things I don't like and I'll let me retain the things I like. Okay. Not that kind of that is not sannyasa. Sannyasa means giving up. General meaning. We're talking about the popular meaning. Giving up means what? Going to an ashram, taking out this, taking this awkward robe. So it's an ashrama sannyasa. Going through the motions. Giving up everything. And ni means formally. Completely and formally me. Formally me means changing the ashrama from Grista ashrama to sannyasa ashrama or from Brahmacharya ashrama to sannyasa ashrama. Like Adi Shankaracharya and many others. Brahmacharya also can take to sannyasa. We have all those provisions in our Shastra. And so that monastic life is what comes to our mind. Changing the ashrama. ashrama. So that formal, because uh, the most important things are in our life are all formal. Like vivaha, marriage. Marriage is a formal thing. It's a ritual. You have to that, that, that ritual is what gives gives sanctity to that new ashram. Sanctity. I was shocked when I in the US some once I read read this they have the Las Vegas. You just it's a driving ma drive-in marriage, it's called. You the two couple go drive in a car. And then they go to Las Vegas and then you, you know, like buying coffee or donuts at McDonald's. 
You just go there. This guy is waiting there at the counter. And you don't have to get down also from the car. No, no, no. You don't, don't think it's going to waste time. No, no. It won't waste any time. Very good. Very simple. You just say, we've come to get married. And then, welcome. And then he'll say some good words. And then he'll produce that, the biblical, you know, say, wow. And then he will wow both of them by making them say all these things. And the wow is made. And then you both are now husband and wife. Five minutes. Okay, maybe ten minutes. Because you have to sign papers and all that, you know. So it takes, takes a little time. So that's it. You don't have to get down at all. When I read this, I was just speechless. I said, this is the ultimate. This is the ultimate. <laughs> oh my God, this is America, I said. My goodness. And so, now here, uh, so... Vivahas are not generally like that. Most tribal. You now, what is the meaning of the word tribal? Tribal means traditional people they are. They, are, they also will have rituals. Big, big rituals. It's a big ritual. So here also, ni implies that kind of a ritual. And our Swamis talk about that ritual and how it is. And overnight, they have to do Gayatri Japa. Before that, they have to do a Viraja Homa and all this. A lot of rituals. Then Swamiji will take them uh, to the banks of the Ganges and then there are some more rituals there and then the the, the Vastram is given, etc. So it's a beautiful process, like any other process. And graduation ceremony, you can't say, oh, ritual. No, graduation also, what do you do? Suppose somebody asks, what is all this black dress and all they are wearing? Black cap. Meaningless thing. Do you ever wear at least this, this sannyasa, this vastram, they wear every day. This black robe, this, this, this guy graduate, wear, go to the office with a black robe. Waste. Waste of money. Buying a cap, waste of money. <laughs> Nobody says it's a waste of money. Somehow you pay up all the fees. They say pay this many dollars, this many rupees. You just sign up. You're in, the, in the joy of graduation, you write all these checks. Okay? And so... But their grad that, that ceremony is so important. It's not like if you miss the ceremony, you're not going to get a certificate. No, you get it. So like that. Very important. All the ribbon cutting and all they have in the West. But the ritualism has missed out. Big loss to the West of that. Okay. So, so a non-traditional definition. Krishna is going to give, has given already in the in the previous chapters. He is not talking about this kind of sannyasa. Even though Shankara says sannyasa means you have to, the ashrama sannyasa, vaidha sannyasa. Vaidha means what? There is a vidhi, there is a niyama. Niyama based sannyasa means you have to go through that ritual. But vaidha sannyasa. And there is a vidhi. And so, Sixth chapter number one, look at this. Anashrita karma phalam karyam kar, karma karoti yaha sasanyasi cha yogi cha naniragh mirna cha kriyaha. The definition he gave there is what? He says, I'm going to tell you who a yogi is. And yogi is a sanyasi. And who is that sanyasi? Anashrita karma phalam 6.1. If you want to look it up later. Karma phalam anashritya, having given up the results of actions. Thank God. So much. Having given up, having given up this dependence on the results of actions. That's what is the meaning of that. That person is a sannyasi, not the guy who is a niragni. He uses the word niragni. Niragni means what? Vedic culture. We are talking about Vedic culture here. Married grastas have a lot of... Only grastas can do agnikari. Omas and yagas. Only they can do. Nobody else can do an agnikari. So niragnihi. So the one who has given up agni means one who has worn the ochre robe. That person. He's saying, no, don't think that person who has an orange robe is a sannyasi. No, I'm going to give you a new definition. Anashrita karma phalam. 
the person who has given up the dependence on karma column is called a sannyas. Like that, he made a very bold statement in the sixth chapter. And, uh, <clears throat> and then next word he says, what about the guy who took to sannyasa anyway? In, went through the process. He wanted to be a sannyas. He became a sannyas. He says, Nahya sannyasta sankalpaha yogi bhavati kaschana. Okay, that person has become a sannyasi. Maybe the person, he or she is living in an ashram. But then that person is not a yogi. Why? Because he has not given up all the likes and dislikes. All dependence is there. Too much. The head is filled with, with a lot of pent up emotions. Likes and dislike based emotions are Nahya sannyasta sankalpaha. Like that, he used the word there. So that's the thing. You know, you can you can say I want to meditate, but you sit and meditate, and then suddenly you think of all the to-do list is coming. That's when the to-do list is just coming, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six, all the ten items are all there. Hey, you're supposed to meditate. You're supposed to say Trimakamya Jamahe Sugandhim Pushtivadhanam. I think I'll go to the grocery store tomorrow, not today. Today is not a good day to get Urva Rukame Bandanan. How come my son did not call me? Mukshi Yamamrita At. This is my meditation, right? So meditation is all of you are smiling. In fact, everybody is smiling. So it looks like it's everybody's experience. Okay, that's what Krishna is saying there. Hey, simply wearing a robe and then going to an ashram is not going to do anything. It's going to be worse. It's going to be. What did he say in another place? Dukkam Aptum Ayogataha. Without being a yogi, if a guy becomes a sannyasi, it's going to be a cause for sorrow because this guy is stuck in the ashram. He can't say, I want to see a movie. Oh, sannyasi, you want to see a movie? Is that it? The sannyasi has given up everything. What? Do you feel like seeing a movie? So, somebody, I'll take you to a movie. And then, that's nothing wrong. Yes, you can go to a movie. Nothing wrong. But if you have all these likes, I feel like going to a Chinese restaurant. Next day, oh, it's boring now. I want to go to a, uh, this is a Colombian restaurant. Like this, if you start talking, this guy has all these things that should have been given up. It has grown out of. There's a meaning of it. Not that a sannyasi should not have any type of food. So he's talking about growing out of this Raga and Pesha. That was the definition he gave in the sixth chapter itself. Okay. But then the answer does not suit Arjuna. That's the problem. Arjuna really wants to move away from this battlefield and go to Shikesh. And so he repeatedly asks the same question. Third chapter, fourth chapter. What about fourth chapter? Okay, Avatara questions are there. And then fifth chapter. Look at fifth chapter. I'm reading the first shloka of the fifth chapter. Okay. Sanyasam karmanam krishna punar yogam cha samshasi yachreya eta yorekam. He starts the question with the word sannyasa. Okay, because sannyasa is indicated as a prized ashrama in our culture. It's prized. Prized means what? You have to earn it. Like a PhD degree, it is earned. It is not simply, you simply don't, somebody doesn't decide to become a sannyasa. No, such a sannyasi is not what we are talking about. So here he is asking a similar question. Similar question. He's saying, you're praising sannyasa, but you're asking me to go to war. I think I've told you that I also like to take sannyasa, but you're not allowing me. That is how it starts. Like this chapter after chapter, he's asking questions. Okay. And uh, Swamiji says, it's like, it's not at all different like us. And like we go to S Swami and then we say, Swamiji, we have some. Something is, we, we need something, right? We need some blessings from Swamiji. We tell them about our problems. But we don't like their answer. Swamiji says, you do this. You we let him do what he wants. Let him find his own girl. Parents are shocked. What? Let him find his own girl? And they don't like. So they come back, come back, bother, harass Swamiji. And so Swamiji says, yeah, it's okay. Finding, doing a horoscope and all is also okay. Ah, Swamiji, that's what we were also thinking. 
That's what we were also thinking. And that's when Dakshina also comes. Until then, no Dakshina. Swamiji will not get Dakshina. I will be all these uh, uh, very uh, uncomfortable statements. Are. So like that, here Krishna, uh, Arjuna is also doing something like that. Waiting, last ditch effort. So, like these reporters, they keep on harassing all the politicians and everybody. And until they're waiting for that answer, some slip, slip of the tongue, that's all they want. And that's it, so that I can blow it out of proportion. That's how it has become these days, what to do. And uh, so, look at this shloka. <clears throat> So we're still in the 18th chapter, okay? Don't think I went off to the first chapter or something. Oh my God, another four years I have to put up with this guy, right? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm coming back to the 18th chapter, okay? Anyway, so, Hey Mahabhaho, okay? That is the second word in this shloka. Hey Mahabhaho. Mahabhaho means mighty arm. Um, Krishna also is 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 a physique wise. They're all big, big people. And so Mahabhaho, Tanya Sasya Tatvam Ichami Veditum. Simple statement it is. Tatvam Ichami Veditum Ichami Veditum. I want to know. Ichami. I want to know Veditum. Kim Veditum Ichami. What do you want to know? Tatvam. The truth. True meaning of. Two meaning of what? Sanyasasya. Sanyasasya tattvam veditam echami. Very simple statement. Because Krishna has given some new definitions and all. So, Arjuna wants to really understand what Krishna is saying. One last time, can you tell me what sanyasa means? Okay. Because he's waiting for the answer. Sanyasa means walking away. Means he's ready to walk away. So, Complete renunciation. Person may have titles. Many titles are there. CEO, this, that. So many titles. Very, very intoxicating these titles are. Even mother, father is a very important title for a person. I am the mother. At least there are two people who can call me mother. Amma. Big thing it is. Because that word Amma. Nobody else in the universe can call Amma except these two people. Correct? Ma. So title, status, everything is there. Even that title has to be given. Motherhood has to be given. The idea that I have children, that also has to be given. Because why should I give up all these things? Hey, you are poor Naha. Full. You are standing on your own legs. You don't need anybody to call you mother or father in order to feel full. That's where we are. That's the journey. So therefore, Krishna is telling all these things. And so... One Swamiji, one Ramakrishna Vishnu Swamiji said this. I made a note those days. Somewhere I read it. It seems we are going by two, two types of ships. Or we are going by a ship. In the front of the ship, there is a relationship. In the back of the ship, there is friendship. This is the ship that we are going on. And then it is attacked by a fish. And that fish is called selfish. Selfish, not shellfish, okay? Not shellfish, selfish, okay? Just to be sure, right? So it is attacked by a fish called selfish. Then now I have to I have to go to a different ship in order to protect myself. And that different ship is called worship. I hope the audio is going through because the audio is so critical in these things. It's called worship. And so that, <laughs> that's that comes to mind, right? Somebody said, you, 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 allopathy, homeopathy, somebody goes to allopathy. Then he says, no, it's not working out. Then they go to homeopathy. And that also is not working out. That also is not working out. Then they came to Swamiji. Then Swamiji said, I think, okay, allopathy and homeopathy are not working out for you. Is that what it is? Okay. Then try Tirupati. That might work. Okay. So then he runs to Tirupati. <clears throat> anyway, so here, Arjuna seems to be in that kind of situation. So look at that next line. Okay. Hrishi Kesha address. Hey Rishi Kesha, he said. Shri Kesha is a name for Sri Krishna. 
Trishikanam Isha. Those who don't know Sanskrit, just listen. Don't worry. After a minute, we'll come back. So, Sanskrit language is loaded. Every word is loaded. Loaded. And you, you turn on the x-ray on the word, suddenly it reveals something. Like the doctor sees all the bones and everything. They say, oh, there's congestion here and everything they say. Just one x-ray, that's it. And they don't spend more than a few seconds on the x-ray. Have you noticed that? And you wonder, Man, I paid so much money and on the scans, so 7,000 rupees. He just looks at it like this. And then he's done with it. 7,000 rupees for two minutes? Two, two seconds? That's it? So, x-ray. Like that x-ray. Hey, look at this. Trishika nam isha. Trishika means sense organs. Sense organs. Sense organs. Why Rishika means sense organs? Krish and Ish. Krish means Krish means false. False. Taking you towards false things is called sense organs. This is taking me towards false things. A. Sense organs Okay, they are doing their job all right, but they are not going to, they don't think they're always going to tell you the truth. I think you have enough examples of that. Okay, so anything you have mirage water and rope snake, those are one type of examples. That is that that's one type of example. No, it's not water, it's really just sand. No, it's not a snake, it's a rope. That's my projection. Okay, but then there is another type. It's not going to tell you the truth. Only Vyavaharika Satyam it can tell you. It can't tell you the Paramatika Satyam. Therefore, Rishikanam Ishaha. He is the Lord. He is the Ishwara of the senses. Means what? He is the one who has, to whom we have to approach. We have to go beyond the sense organs and approach this guy called Krishna. He is called Rishikeshaha. And that's the answer. The student in Kena Upanishad, the student, the teacher gives the answer. The student is asking the question, hey, is there somebody behind my eyes? Is there somebody behind my ears? Behind my mind? Is there somebody who is making my mind think all these things? And the teacher says, yes. Shrotrasya shrotram manaso mano yad vacho havacham nahu pranasya pranaha. Yes. Yes, there is that person. That entity is called Shrotrasya Shrotram. That means what? Ear of the ears. Two ears you have. The ear of the ears is called Paratma. It's a vague answer. But that's the answer he gives. So here also, Krishna is the, is the sense of all the sense organs. Something like that. Shika Nam Vishaha. So look at, look at this. If we didn't know Sanskrit at all, we can't do all this analysis. And you miss out the whole language and Rishikesh will just become a place in India. It's a place in India that you may want to visit, you need not visit also. That's all the Rishikesh is. But now, once we know Sanskrit a little bit, suddenly it gains some meaning. It gains a solid meaning. Look at what a loss it is if we do not know Sanskrit. Anyway, not to worry for those people who don't know Sanskrit. Right? Even Sanskrit students may not know these things because we are, we are going a little deeper on that. But just to highlight the beauty of the language. And then he addresses, Arjuna addresses Krishna by another word in the shloka called Keshi Nishudana. Keshi Nishudana. Nishudana means one who destroyed. And a, 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 a Rakshasa called Keshi. Some Keshi Rakshasa was there. Some horse, horse, uh, horse bodied, horse shaped Rakshasa called Keshi. And so he killed that Keshi who was, who was terrorizing everybody. And so he got this name Keshi Nishudana. So in Sanskrit, you can form words like that based on certain attributes of a person. So, Ke Trishi Kesha Tyagasya Cha Tyagasya Cha. And then the verb is missing. You have to bring the previous tattvam veditum ichan. Replace the word sannyasasya by tyagasya. 
and write your second question. I want to know the, the truth of what you mean by the word Tyaga. Okay, Prithak. Prithak. Prithak means distinctly. Distinctly. Tell me clearly. Don't use the word Tyaga for Sanyasa. Don't use the word Sanyasa for Tyaga. Don't make a mishmash of things. I want to know clearly. That's what he's saying. Tyagasya. Tyaga, I think we know, is from, from the root Tyaj. Tyaga comes from that root. And uh, so let's translate the shloka. <clears throat> Arjuna asked, O mighty armed Krishna. O mighty armed Krishna, Kama, the destroyer of Keshi. O mighty armed Krishna, the destroyer of Keshi. I desire to know the true nature of I desire to know the true nature of sannyasa and of tyaga. Sannyasa and of tyaga. Distinctly. Once again, Arjuna asked. You can put everything in quotes if you want. Oh, mighty armed Krishna, the destroyer of Keshi. I desire to know the true nature of sannyasa and of tyaga distinctly. Next shloka. You didn't, you didn't, Mahadeya, you huh? didn't translate Prishikesha. Prishikesha. <laughs> what, did, what did we say here? Uh, no, see, see, this is how it works. Mahabaho is mighty arm. Rishikesha is Krishna. Krishna is the word translation for Rishikesha. He can fill up the rest. The Lord of the senses and all you can say. And then destroyer of Keshi is Keshi Nishuda. Okay. That's how this translation is. <clears throat> okay. Bhagavan Uvacha Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kamyanam Karmanam Nyasam Kamyanam Karmanam Nyasam Sanyasam Kavayo Viduhu Sanyasam Kavayo Viduhu Sarva Karma Palatyagam Sarva Karma Palatyagam Prahus Tyagam Vichakshana Rahustyagam vichakshana. Yeah. See, sometimes we chant two times. Sometimes we chant just once. Some of you may be wondering why. See, some in our ashram we only chant once. This two times chanting is just, uh, just did it because initially and all, if you remember, many of you had difficulty chanting. Many of you were new to Sanskritam chanting and all. Right? And so now everybody is good. So we don't need to chant two times. That's the reason I did. There is don't think there is some tradition where you have to do it two times and all. Now, two times chanting is done in our Veda Parayanam. There is a tradition of chanting two times. Why? Because you say you say something. Trembakam yaja mahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam. Then the student says, Trembakam yaja mahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam. It gives the teacher an opportunity to see if the person really got it or if there is some doubt in the pronunciation. If the doubt is there, what will happen? It will come out once you do it two times. But if two times, if you do it correctly, then the assumption is you got it. That's, that's the tradition. That's why we did it two times. 
So, but here, sometimes I feel like doing two times. I don't know why I do it. That's coming like that. Sometimes just once is fine. All right. Now what's happening? You have to mark these shlokas two and three. You can put it in quotes or whatever. Here, Krishna is telling what others are saying about sannyasa and tyaga. Others, not me. Scholars, shastragnas, what others are telling about sannyasa and tyaga is going to say. You know, it's, it is something like this. Something, I was trying to think what example we can. Something like this. Coconut oil. What the West is saying about coconut oil is it's not good for you. It's cholesterol and this and that. But what Ayurveda says is like that, you know, somebody says. That's a way to explain, right? Ayurveda is going to say something very different. Indian tradition is going to say something different. Kerala people will say something very different. They will, in the menu, if you say, you'll, you'll see the menu, oh, everything is good. And finally, you pour two cups of coconut oil. Kerala people, you ask, you ask any Kerala friend. If you don't know, you ask and find out. Coconut oil is an essential part of their recipe. Okay. And if you don't know, you can ask Ramoji. Ramoji is from Kerala. And he'll tell you all about the origins, history, and then methodology, and then composition, and then chemistry, and then benefits, and the drawbacks also of coconut oil. The only problem is he'll send you a 50 megabyte PDF file. That's the only problem. That's only. He won't tell you like the way I told you. He will tell you. He'll give you this big thing. Then you have to decide whether to click that thing on that on WhatsApp. And then it's going circling. It's going. And you are wondering when this circle is going to get completed. And people like me, I'm sitting somewhere where I use the telephone's internet also. And it takes some time. Where is the time to read all these PDF files? 50. And then after that, some of you are putting likes also. Thumbs up. I wonder, wow, what is the meaning of this thumbs up? Does mean you downloaded, you read all the 2,000 pages and you love it? Is that the meaning of the thumbs up? I don't know. I, I just don't know. Thumbs up means what? Nobody has done anything to that PDF file. That is the truth. Correct? Anyway, that's the joys of WhatsApp. So, all this because of coconut oil. And coconut oil because of this quotation mark. Two and three in quotation mark. Okay, And that means what? Krishna is going to say. Some scholars are going to say. This is the following about sannyasa and Tyaga. <clears throat> general meaning of sannyasa. You know what it is. Just generally giving up things. Staying with fewer and fewer things. I saw a video just, just two, three days ago. One week ago, I saw a video, small in WhatsApp. And that the, how many of you know Shiv Nada? Shiv Nada. How many of you know Shiv Nada? Yeah, I see about seven or eight people, eight, nine people, ten people raising your hands. Okay, good. <clears throat> He's the founder. <laughs> He's the founder of a company called... Um, Hindustan Computers Limited, also popularly called as HCL. HCL, that's how it's called these days. And so he's the founder. So he's talking to a bunch of college students. And he's talking about his life. He says things like, my mother had five children, but we had no bedrooms. Today there are five bedrooms, but no children. Like this, he's joking. A very interesting talk. Just one minute snapshot I saw. And then he says... Success is not defined by how much money you make. Success is defined by how little money you need. He talks like that. Okay. I was very impressed. I had heard about Shiv Nada before. Long ago I had read. But then suddenly this video brought him up. Brought this character up. So you can see some leaders. They are grounded. They are really, really grounded. Correct? They attribute their successes to, to, to things that are that are basically coming down to values and fundamental truths, is it not? I was very impressed by that. Anyway, that's coming to my mind. So giving up, so giving up is not a new thing. Not a new thing. Not a new thing. Why do I say it's not a new thing? Hey, we also fight at home and then we say, just feel like running away from here. Have you said that or not? 
Yeah, all of us would have said that. That running away from here is what? That is what sannyasa is. I just don't feel like being here. That's it. Just run away. And then sometimes children also do that. They just go and then they'll come back after a few hours. So this sannyasa is not a new idea at all. And so giving up and then giving up karma, often giving up karma activity. That's why ashrama sannyasa means person who has no duties to do. No duties. The, even the duties that are normally given to all of us, not there for a sannyas. But because an ideal mind is a devil's workshop, yes, we have to do. People can't handle idleness. Not doing is just not possible. It's just impossible. But to today's world, it's just impossible. So, that is why Krishna says, Nahi kastit kshanam api jatu tishtatya karma kritu. Like that, he says that. In any case, you can't be, anybody cannot be without doing any karma. All right, that's a general meaning. What karma means, what, is, what do we mean by karma? There are five types of karma. We say karma, there are five types. Kamya karma, things that I want. Things that I want. For my, for... I want a phone, I want an air conditioner, I want a new house, I want a shoe, pair of shoes, I want anything. I want this, I want that. That's called Kamya Karma. Next, Nishiddha Karma. Things that I am not supposed to do. Abstaining from things I am not supposed to do. Okay. Imsam na kuriya. May you not hurt others. Asap. May you not speak untruth. So those are all called nishita karma. Avoidance of things that the Shastram says and even common sense says that you should not. That's called nishita karma. Prohibited actions. Kami karma is what? Actions that help me get what I like. That's called kami karma. Okay. Nishita karma is what? Karma actions that I should not do. Third type of karma is what? Prayas chitta karma. Prayas chitta karma. So actions of atonement. Atonement. Very important. Very important. Suppose I hurt somebody by saying something I should not have said. And that too in public I said, she got hurt. He got hurt. Very obvious. Now that's gnawing in me. I realized it. I went home and I realized it. Now what am I going to do? What am I going to do now? I can call the person and apologize. I can do that. No doubt. That may or may not resolve the issue. If it resolves the issue, well and good. No, 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 that's okay. I've forgotten it and all she might say. She might not have forgotten it, but she says I've forgotten it. That's fine. She's being nice to you. Correct? And she's happy that you called and apologized. But I can do one more thing. I can say, okay, that is Prayashita Karma. Apologizing is a Prayashita Karma. Correct? Very simple. Apologize. Neutralizing a wrong act. Neutralizing the impact of a wrong act is called Prayashita Karma. I can do one more thing. I can tell her, because I did this to you and I hurt you, and I simply words cannot remove all the hurt, I hurt you and because I don't want to repeat this mistake again, I've decided for that for the next month, I'm going to the temple twice a week and I'm going to do a Pradakshina of Shiva 108 times. Thinking about you and that I should not repeat this again. Suppose I tell that this to the person. What will happen? What will happen? Two things will happen. One is that person's anger would be completely gone. Neutralized to zero. My goodness, she is doing tapas for my sake. Means my sake means for the mistake that she has committed, which she doesn't do. No, 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 you don't have to do all that. No, I'm doing it. I, I feel like doing it. I need it because this kind of irresponsible behavior is not to be condoned and I am shocked and I am ashamed that I did it. And in order for me to give myself a lesson, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give myself to Ishwara. Bhagavan, Shri, Shiva, I want, it's a prayer. Nobody can stop me from doing a prayer. Correct? Nobody can stop another person from praying. 
ప్రాయస్ చిత్త కర్మ పవర్ఫుల్ ప్రాయస్ చిత్త కర్మ ఇట్ ఈస్ అబ్సల్యూట్లీ పవర్ఫుల్ ఇన్ అవర్ కల్చర్ దేర్ ఆర్ డిఫరెంట్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్రాయస్ చిత్త కర్మాస్ దే విల్ సే ఆల్ కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ థింగ్ గో టు దిస్ టెంపుల్ గో టు వైష్ణోదేవి గో టు కన్యాకుమారి గో టు కాంచీపురం గో టు దట్ టెంపుల్ అండ్ డూ దిస్ అర్చన కాన్స్టెంట్లీ దే విల్ బి టెలింగ్ యూ సమ్థింగ్ ఇట్స్ ఆర్ ప్రాయస్ చిత్త కర్మ now they will be telling you these things also for other things kami karma also i want a child i want a success in business everything also they will tell you all this but even for prayas chitta karma there are things like this that's called prayas chitta karma okay very important so that's the best way to clear accounts clear accounts suppose somebody is there that you heard but the somebody is not there anywhere gone somewhere you are not in touch with that person or the person is passed away what do you do you can still do a prayas chitta karma keeping that person in mind and communicating to the person mentally and then saying i'm going to do this karma accounts will be cleared amazing absolutely amazing anyway this is called actions of atonement called prayas chitta karma two more very important karmas are there one is called nitya karma fourth one is nitya karma fifth one is naimittika karma naimittika karma what is nitya karma we are talking about a vedic culture vedic culture means every day we have duties religious duties religious activities like lighting the lamp okay the, the, the simple and then saying some shlokas puja prarthana all this is a daily part and parcel of the vedic life that's called nitya karma daily daily things we have to do and those who are initiated into the vedas they have even more karmas to do even more karmas to do. okay and so that's called nitya karma naimittika karma yeah then what happens this married people then periodically they have to do things like if their parents have passed away then tarpanam has to be done that's called naimittika karma it comes on a particular day amavasya okay and then shraddham this that so many things are come so that's called naimittika niyama means it comes when certain stars align it comes it comes and also those who are, and then of course navaratri is there navaratri means what many women will 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 mentally prepare themselves this next 9 10 days i am going to devote myself to the worship of devi nothing can shake me nothing can shake me that's it and so for days it goes on days it goes on. tapas it's a tapas so that's called naimittika karma can it happens only once a year all right so nitya karma naimittika karma so let's let's go back number 1 kamya karma things i like i have to do things in order to achieve what i want get what i want so that's called kamya karma then pratishiddha karma prohibited actions next prayas chitta karma actions of atonement then nitya karma daily religious activities and naimittika karma occasional or periodic religious activities this is our understanding of karma okay all right so it's about 7:30 here <clears throat> and uh, we will uh, let me see if i can at least complete the train of thought here kamyanam karmanam nyasam sanyasam so he's going to give the definition now two definitions are going to be given is going to say one is kamyanam karmanam tyag you know that kamya karma that we talked about that number one number one and number two and number three also pratishiddha karma of course prohibited actions of course have to be given up there is no need to say that and then prayasitta is not needed if i am not doing any pro- prohibited actions therefore one two three giving up kamyanam karmanam nyasam giving up of those first three sanyasam kavayo viduhu that is called sanyasa se ku kavayaha kavayaha plural of the word kavi kavi 
commonly people think kavi is a poet kavi meaning of kavi is dirghadarshi one who can see things far and beyond how the society is going they can predict our lives are moving they can predict they are called kavi dirghadarshi they can they can see the future so they know a lot learned people if they are taha scholars scholars say that this is the meaning of sanyasa giving up 1 2 and 3 is called sanyasa then what about others sarva karma phala tyagam tyagam sarva karma phala tyagam prahu tyagam vichakshana vichakshana also scholars learned people shastra kushala shastra gnana people who know the shastra they say they give a different definition they say i mean not different sorry tyaga the word uh, tyaga that you asked tyagam they say prahu who say what do they say sarva karma phala tyagam giving up of the results of all actions okay this is referring to number 4 and 5 nitya karma naimitika karma he is saying giving up of 1 2 and 3 agreed but there is one more thing i am going to tell you for 4 and 5 also all the puja prarthana that i am doing every day okay with if do, i do it for two things one is i do it for my own security and pleasure okay that is called kamya kamya artham i do it for my own kam kamya means object desired objects or i can do it for what antakarana shuddhi means may i gain some clarity of mind to observe what the shastram is going to say antakarana shuddhi artham so my if my prayer is for all material benefits he says sarva karma phala tyagam give up that that tyaga is called if my puja and prarthana is only for antakarana shuddhi not for artha and kama and dharma also dharma means punyam and papam i want punyam by this puja i want to gain more punyam no that desire also if i don't have okay then that is called sarva phala karma phala tyagam some people say that that is the meaning of tyagam tyagam means giving up of the results of what kind of actions nitya karma and naimittika karma called tyagam and what is sanyasa sanyasa is giving up the 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 okay and the okay that is the answer his given we'll come back in the next class review this shloka once again and then move on to the next shloka okay and uh, uh, let me give you the meaning then shri bhagavan said or bhagavan said the wise no sanyasa as the wise no sanyasa as renunciation of actions the wise no sanyasa as renunciation of actions for desired objects kamyanam karmana desired object the word kamya kamya means an object that is desired it's called kamya all right so actions for desired objects and my colon the learned people say renunciation of the learned people say renunciation of the results of all actions renunciation of the results of all actions is tyaga is tyaga
Okay, so let me read this again. Sri Bhagavan said, The wise know sannyasa as renunciation of actions for desired objects. Semicolon. The learned people say, renunciation of the results of all actions is tyaga. Also. Om Apadama Pahartaram Dataram Sarvasampadam Loka Bhiramam Shri Ramam Bhuyo Bhuyo Namam Yaham Om Kale Varshatu Pajanyaha <coughs> Prithivi Sasya Shalini Desho Yam Kshobharahidaha Brahmana Santu Nirbhayaha Om Pur Namadaf Pur Namidam Pur Nath Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Pyona Maha Harihi Om Then you are.